Sounds like a plan. Um, all right, well, we're grateful to be here. The, uh, the reason we're here is that a couple months ago, I tweeted out that somebody should really do a like reverse pitch competition. Oh, that's right. Where, where the founders pitch the VCs. I want somebody to win the Founders Choice Award. Like that's the thing that I wanna see, you know, what that would be. And, you know, Jason called me on it and, you know, John came in on it and word is bond. And so we're here. Um, all right, so Bloomberg Beta. At Bloomberg Beta, what we want is we want to find the extraordinary founders who are defining the future of work. And there's a founder like that who inspires us from years ago. He worked at a big company, tall skyscraper, back when we did that, you know, thousands of people at his company did this manual task every day. And in this case, the thing they were doing is that they had to call people to find out the price of a bond. And this future founder thought, you know, that's a waste. Uh, and he knew that he could look up the prices instantly if you just built some technology. And so I think you know how this story goes. He bugged his bosses to let him do that. And he bugged them so much that eventually his bosses fired him. And so the founder took his severance check and he built a company. And in a lot of ways, that was the first modern technology startup. Um, they made a computer terminal and the software to look up prices of bonds 24-7. And over the years that would follow, they made work faster and more efficient in one of the most important industries. And so four decades later, almost 20,000 employees still work for that founder. And the company that he started earns billions of dollars uh, that he uses to fight climate change and stop guns and educate kids and actually, like, actually make the world a better place. And so that company is Bloomberg LP, which is our fund's investor, our fund's LP, and its founder is Mike Bloomberg. When we started Bloomberg in 1981, we had four people, one coffee pot, and no customers. No one had heard of a tech startup back then, but that's what we were. We've grown a lot since then, but we still believe strongly in a culture of entrepreneurialism and what it can accomplish. And that's why we created Bloomberg Beta. Yeah, so Mike built something extraordinary and it was the first of its kind. And today at Bloomberg Beta, what we wanna do is we wanna look for the next generation of founders who are gonna build something extraordinary that's gonna be the first of its kind. And so what we do is we invest early in founders defining the future of work. We were the first firm to focus on the future of work and we write checks up to a million dollars. We do seed and pre-seed all in the United States. And one of the special things about our team is that we know what an extraordinary founder looks like because we've worked directly for some of the most successful founders in history. So yes, you know, Mike Bloomberg, uh, I worked for Rupert Murdoch when he bought MySpace. Uh, my partner, Karen, worked for Masasan when he just started out investing in the US for the first time. So we've seen what it takes. And that's why today, you know, we work for founders like the Ediths who is an ultra marathoner and built Launch Darkly for the Davids, who started a way that many of you may know to learn from the world's best. The Maxes, who are going public just five years after starting their company. Stewarts, you know, build services we use every day. Yeah, so we work for the Mats, who if you develop stuff for the web, you probably know they are making the web 10 times faster. We work for Kieran's who use AI to make us all better writers, and Ryans, who are delivering in an industry that is literally a multi-trillion dollar industry. And the founders who we backed have raised $7.3 billion, and they're taking on some of the biggest problems in the world. And so what I'm going to share for a few minutes is how we get to know the founders that we back, how we serve them, how we think about the future of work, and then how to know if you're a fit for us. So I want to start with when we invest, because early for us really means early. And we know that if you're early and extraordinary, you really can start absolutely anywhere. And so five years before the person I'm about to tell you about became a founder, we heard about him, a Jordanian named Amjad. He was an engineer and he made a name for himself by doing open source work on JavaScript. And we watched him go from Jordan to a startup in New York to Facebook. And in 2016, he and his wife, Haya, decided to start their own company. And they could not get VCs to pay attention until he sent us an email. And so I just want to share, Amjad said, Roy took my meetings when others wouldn't open my emails. Without Bloomberg Beta's long-term view, we wouldn't be where we are today. 
And today that company, Replit, counts as a personal investor, Paul Graham. Mark Andreessen led the round that was after hours. They've got 6 million users and they're just getting started. And we're really serious about finding extraordinary founders early. In fact, when we started our firm, we wanted to see if we could find every founder possible before they actually started a company. And we wondered, you know, is there some way we could predict who might be a venture-backed founder before they even knew it? And so we analyzed some public information to find the 350 people in the tech industry most likely to start a venture-backed company who had yet to start one. And we emailed them out of the blue and said, our algorithm, algorithm chose you. We've been making friends with them for years. And the New York Times, which covered this, our future founders project, explained something many of you know, which is that the next Mark Zuckerberg is not who you might think. They're more diverse in every way. Future founders are more female. They're more black and brown. They're older. And we are so obsessed about being early that when babies, who are our favorite startups, are born, this is the present that we send. And the truth is nobody knows who's gonna grow up to be an extraordinary founder. What we know from the founders who we work for is that extraordinary founders share that they're unreasonable. They just don't accept things the way that they are. And this George Bernard Shaw quote that the reasonable person adapts themselves to the world and the unreasonable one adapts the world to them. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable person. And an extraordinary founder is the kind of person who can make something out of nothing, they're the kind of person who both understands exactly how the world works, but also when to ignore it. They can both hear the feedback and mute the haters. They can be stubborn, like diamond hands stubborn, but the second that they realize they're wrong, they just let go. And that's what we see that an extraordinary founder brings to the table. And what we bring, our kind of secret ingredient, is that we know how to bring that extraordinary inside of a founder to life. And we do it in a really simple way which is that we treat founders as our customers. Now, a lot of people say that, what does it actually mean for us? The first thing it means is we're not gonna bullshit you. We're not gonna advertise on our website that founders are our customers and then ghost you for three weeks because sorry, I'm in Bali, which actually happened to me when I started a company, meaning an investor said that to me. It also means that if we back you, we treat you as the boss. We put everything we know and everyone we know behind you, and you get to be the one who decides what to do, and we back your decisions. We don't do we do the uh, advice thing where you roll your eyes secretly while somebody's telling you how to do your job. It also means that we're going to be real with you even when it's hard. You know, we're known for saying the quiet part out loud, and we also know that starting a company and a lot of the investors today have talked about this, it's so true. It can just feel like crap sometimes. And even extraordinary founders doubt themselves as much as everybody else. And so we treat you like a person and we'll just as happily recommend to you some you know, executive coach. We know some of the secret coaches whose clients are the founders you've all heard of. And we'll just as happily recommend a therapist because when you're starting a company, it is all personal. And the last thing that being our customer means is that we're not gonna waste your time. As a founder, I had this frustrating experience of again and again, spending weeks trying to get a meeting with a VC only to learn 60 seconds in that they didn't even invest in the thing that I was doing. And when VCs are black boxes, it wastes everyone's time. And founder time we see as one of the most precious resources in the whole universe. So when we created Bloomberg Beta, we just asked ourselves, what if we did the opposite? What if we put it all out there and we're absurdly transparent? And so that's what we did. We took the thing that was once upon a time, the internal operating manual for our fund, and we published it. Um, we even open sourced it. We made it our website. You can go there now. And eight years, 584 commits later, that's still our Bible. We share everything there that we think a founder would want to know before meeting us. We share our diligence questions, our deal terms, our full investment documents, what we believe, who to call if you want to complain, even numbers on gender diversity. And if it's missing something, of course, you know how to log an issue or put in a pull request. Um, and still, if you ask a VC how they help you succeed, I recommend you not listen to a word that any of us says because everybody says more or less the same stuff. Um, the voices that really matter are the voices of founders. And so 58 of the founders we've backed have shared their thoughts about us. And you can listen to them yourself at this link right here. And before everybody pulls out their camera and uh, you know tries to push this out, I'll reshare the screen in a second. I'm just tweeting this link um, so that you can go grab it. And I just wanna share a sample with you. Tiffany, 
Tiffany is an organizer's organizer. She's building a community of women who learn together. And she says, our partner, Karen, asked the most thorough and toughest questions of any investor, and she's still been a ray of hope. Bailey and Anne were the first women to start a company acquired by Apple. I met them when they were my students in the Berkeley class that I teach. And what they told us is that we made them feel both independent and completely supported, which is exactly the feeling we want founders to have. And so, yeah, we want to be founders' first calls. You know, if the issue's big, small, Amjad called me yesterday, picked up in the middle of the meeting, consider us on speed dial. When you put up the bat signal, we answer the call. And the core of how we do this is our team. We've had the same equal partners together since day one for almost a decade. Me, James Cham, Karen Klein, five of us are from immigrant families. So we fight and we fought over this presentation. We get over it. It's just how my family expressed love. And our team's also done a lot more things than the typical VC. So yeah, like a lot of VCs, we're on public company boards, but we're also on public radio boards. We worked in government after 9-11. We've led nonprofits. We've taught at Berkeley. We've been software engineers and we've been in your shoes. I started a company in the creator economy. Karen started a company as well. By the way, my company, creator economy, wasn't even a phrase when we started the company. And our company was backed by the designer Eve Behar, by a member of Amazon's board, by Alibaba. And I'm sharing all those experiences and perspectives because they come together to serve the founders we back. And I'll add, there's one more thing that other VC firms do that I find really frustrating that we don't. At other firms, you might meet with somebody and the person's title might even be partner. But it turns out that the person you're meeting with doesn't actually have the power to invest in your company without getting permission. And every single member of the Bloomberg beta team has the power to say yes to investing in you. And if we do, some days we act as your switchboard operator, some days we're your publicist, some days we'll mop your brow, and some days we will even buy you chicken soup, which is a true story. And when we asked our former teammates after leaving what they thought of their experience with us, one of them said, this is a team that gives all the fucks. And our core team is really only part of it because we're at the center as people and with our experiences at the center of a very wide network of friends. And we put them to work for the founders we back. In that network are two former secretaries of the treasury, public company CEOs who will call us about the future of work, philosophers, economists, authors, scientists, union bosses, video game developers, hedge fund managers, socialists. Uh, in our affinity, we have 49,000 people who one of us has personally been in touch with. Now, do we know them all well enough to get them a birthday present? Of course not. But could one of those people, like one of those dots, be an extraordinary founder's first customer or a person who makes the difference for some startup that we backed? Absolutely. And of course, the network also includes the other VCs who invest in founders after we do. I shared that number, 7.3 billion, but it's just a number and it's low because you know that's only what's been announced in public. And the real number's higher. The real thing that matters is who those investors are because we believe in quality. And we work with the most respected investors in the world, including by the way, some of the other funds who are presenting here at this event. And the reason that those funds work with us isn't because we're like pals with them who go to get coffee and catch up. I mean, we have some friendships, but the reason is because they believe that the startups we backed are going to return their whole fund. And so I want to share a couple of perspectives. Take Cyan's perspective. Cyan is a legendary investor who was grateful for our welcome into the community of VCs and thinks of us as a mentor. Another investor at one of the most successful firms ever wanted to be anonymous but said, why do I even do my job anymore? All I do is follow on in things that Bloomberg Beta invested in first, and that's an actual quote. And you know, those are anecdotes, and anecdotes are lovely. We want to share the data. The number one metric that we use to run our fund, and we have from the very beginning, is founders' net promoter scores of us, their customer service ratings of us. And we're proud of those scores, um, but we also use the feedback to just keep improving. Every year, we sit together as a team, and we read every comment. And when a founder says that we didn't live up to a promise, it stings. And we learn and we try to do better. Because when we back a company, our goal is to be the most useful investor per minute a founder spends with us. One of the ways that we do that is we help founders to tell their story. When we met Ryan Peterson, who started Flexport, I knew what a pain it was to import goods for my own startup. And immediately after our meeting, I went to my desk, called their number as a customer and was just wowed by their service. And today, Ryan says that part of the reason why people have actually heard of Flexport, which is, after all, a shipping company, 
is because of us. And as much value as we hope that the founders that we back get from us, we know that they get it from each other. When we get founders together as a group, we are inspired by this Picasso quote, that it's the art critics who, when they get together, talk about the big ideas like form and structure and meaning. When real artists get together, they talk about where you can buy cheap turpentine. And so our monthly turpentine talks are where founders privately share the wisdom that they fought hard to earn about everything from sales to M&A. They'll refer a deck designer. Sadly, they will even refer a divorce lawyer. Um, and we collect that wisdom in private blog posts, private lists of preferred vendors. We even created the first founder Slack channel. And when the founders we back meet up in person, it's like some startup version of the Avengers. It's like all those superpowers coming together, all defining the future of work. And while we support founders today, we're also keeping an eye out on the future because we know founders don't have the time to follow all the thought leaders or read the academic papers. So that's something we do for them. And in our area of expertise, which is the future of work, we were the first to the party and we've stuck with it. We've stuck with it enough to know that there's a crisis right now. And the crisis is some people are just suffering needlessly at work and others are suffering because they don't have enough work. And we believe founders can use technology to fix that right now. You can find all of our beliefs about the future of work in public too in our manual. We call work the soil of new technology where we write the first draft of technology history. And when we started, people did not get what we meant. We had to be patient and we're used to that. Scott, who started Meetup, says about Karen that Karen was investing in New York tech before it was cool. She's in it for the long haul. We were the first fund to say we wanted to invest in AI, which we started doing the year after we started our firm and we're still doing it today. We've served Lucas, who's been making AI through both summer and winter and says James was his first choice because he pushes him to think clearly and is so relentlessly positive. Anthony, who started the largest community of data scientists in the world, sold it to Google, remembers the end of those phone calls during challenging times. And what we want is to give founders the longest possible telescope so they can see into the future of work. And that's why we do things like we've served on official government commissions. We studied universal basic income. We were the first to point out how much it could help creators. We took members of Congress with VCs on tours around the country, including some presenting here at this event. And what we've learned is the future of work is already here. It depends on the dignity and security of every working person. And while this is you know, great, it leaves out a really important practical question, which is when your fund says you invest in the future of work, what, 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 do you, what do you include exactly? Because these days when you hear the future of work, there are lots of words. Is it collaboration technology or video chat or messaging or task, whatever? Yeah, it's all that. But we think of that as just one layer of the future of work because those are all productivity tools that folks like us use, you know, tech people who are sitting in front of a keyboard like we're doing right now, or I am. Um, but if the future of work is just the future of working for folks like us, that seems like a pretty limited vision. We think it's bigger. So we look up and down the entire stack of everything that supports work, everything from the infrastructure that stores data and enables AI, explains your models or tools up your data scientists, to the applications that businesses use, which, by the way, often take the ideas that software developers had first and make them available to everyone, to professional media and education that make talent more powerful and make work more humane. And we're proud investors, hashtag proud investors, in extraordinary founders at every layer of that stack. We also invest in businesses that enter a market by including within them some profound new idea for how work ought to function. You might know what a full stack company is. Well, we like, we especially like, a certain kind of full stack company that we call a hot swap startup. And a hot swap in computing is when you replace part of a system while it's running. And a hot swap startup, it doesn't just sell technology to some big old company, it builds and uses the technology itself to just compete with them head on in industries like logistics or real estate, security, insurance, and more. Max built a hot swap company that is a real estate title company. And we sent him investment documents the same day he pitched us. And like I said, he's already going public just five years later. And we hope that we get to hold our shares for 50 more. So last thing, now that we've explained how we serve founders, how do you know if you might be a fit for us? Well, that's something we're public about too. You can go to our website and see the criteria we use to make investments. And the most important one is we need one reason to believe that you could be building one of the greatest companies ever. It could be early traction. If you're pre-product, it could be a penetrating insight. It could be a lot of things, but we need that one reason to believe. 
And then we need to believe that we could be the best investor in you. And so that means things like, we need to be able to trust you. The deal terms need to be fair. And most of all, you need to be working on something where we feel like we have expertise because when things go sideways, which in startups, they will always go sideways, we wanna know how to help you. Um, and so yes, we're experts in the future work, but we're not experts in everything. And we don't want every founder to pitch us because I guarantee you after this presentation, my DMs, which are open, I'm gonna end up with message after message from a founder who is only half listening and is spamming every investor presenting here today. Do not be that person. We're not gonna invest in your weight loss company in Berlin because the future of work is being healthy. Honestly, we just won't respond. And when we do look at a company, we try to pass fast. And the reason we do that is because we save our times for, for the founders who we built our firm to serve, the work stack, the full stack of the future of work. And specifically, we don't invest in financial services because we're not a corporate investing arm looking for partners for the mothership. And we don't invest in some other categories like retail or travel and local. So please do not pitch us if you're out of our scope. If you'd rather your investors be nice than be honest, if you want adult supervision, don't pitch us. We don't do adult supervision. We invest in adults. Don't pitch us if all you want is just the money. That might be great for some people. And honestly, it's better than many VCs, but it's just not what we do. Pitch us if you're building something that you think is going to shape the future of work. Because even though starting a company takes more skill than any other occupation we know, it also takes heart. And Siobhan, who is one of the members of our team who now works for Elon, said, wow, does heart ever matter when you're going on a long journey together? And the journey is going to test you in ways you can't imagine. We might be able to imagine it because we've been there for years. And if you're a fit for us, we're going to be there for you. If you want to hear from the founders that we backed for yourself, like I said, you can find them at this link, which I also tweeted out. And we're grateful to every founder we backed for inviting us on the journey. I want to give a special thank you to the ones who helped us with their services that we've used in this presentation. And so you can follow us, teach us, reach us. We're always learning. And I'll just say to wrap up, the reason we care about the future of work is that we think that work at its best can be amazing. It could be delightful. It can connect us. And founders know that about their own work. And extraordinary founders can make it happen for everybody. You know, nobody should have to suffer at work. Nobody should have to suffer without having work. And extraordinary founders, and it could be you, can put that all to an end. So if we get the chance to put you first, maybe we'll define that future and build it together. Thank you. Wow, Roy, that was just absolutely incredible. Thank uh, you. I was thinking I, was, I might need to get a cup of coffee before going for the second half of the- Then event. I woke you up. I, after hearing you speak, man, the charisma, the energy, you were, you were perfect for the post-break. Uh, you know, we, we, we all went and got some food. We started to feel a little tired. That was just incredible. So I know you had a lot of pressure on yourself because you put together the original Twitter thread, right? And you were like, you had the idea for reverse demo day. Like you just put together the standard for how, how VCs should pitch founders. Absolutely. Masterclass presentation, masterclass in transparency and honesty, and just brilliant, brilliant speaking. Well, we had a lot of help. I mean, I, I, you know, I'll post it later, but you know, we don't do these things alone. Like we took it seriously and put in the time and effort. Cause like, you know, we're not magical. We just do the work. Well, sometimes that's, that's more than, than what a lot of people do. And, and, and not to, you know, all the presentations we've had so far have been incredible, Agreed. but man, good grief. That was, that was so amazing. Ah, thank um, you. A couple questions for you. So, so first a couple questions from the audience, from myself, first of all, absolutely love that your website is on GitHub. That is just so freaking cool. Um, well, tell me who had the idea to do that? How did you get that to work? What was the thought process and why did you, why did you choose to do that? I honestly don't remember who had the idea. What happened was we're like, look, we looked at VC websites and, and VC websites, there's a reason why they're also secretive. It has to do with the history of the industry being private equity. I'm like, we just don't want this. Like, let's just put it all out there. And then what we were looking for was a content management system where we could make the edits ourselves and where our customers, founders would feel at home. And so GitHub just happened to be the best answer um, for that. And it served us so well. I mean, we're really grateful. I now use Replit to edit the document, but, uh, but, you know, but GitHub is where it's hosted and obviously displayed. I think that's just so cool. Uh, so Sarita has a question. This is a fast one. It, do you guys only invest in the, in the United States? Are you geographic centric? 
Yeah, the word only is uh, always, yeah. so we invest in the United States, we have made one or two investments elsewhere where there are extenuating circumstances, but the reason for this isn't because we think that companies elsewhere are not as good. In fact, I go to the UK once a year to make sure like to see what I'm missing, you know, and, and other places too. I mean, I've done like startup tours in Saudi Arabia. So we try to learn, it's that we want to be able to earn that 10 on the NPS question. And mm -hmm. if you're based somewhere else and it's like, yeah, we're getting founders together. I mean, next week, I might get some founders together at my house to talk about where do you draw the line about which customers to serve? You know, I can't exactly zoom in your laptop for that kind of thing. And so while we all love remote work, there is something about physical presence. Absolutely. Great, great answer. Um, do you consider, so under the remote, under the definition of the future of work, right, in terms of companies that you invest in, Joshua had a question do you consider sourcing candidates or like recruiting tech, like in the, in the recruiting staff? Yeah, absolutely. Industry? I mean, there are a bunch of, I can go, you know, if somebody hits me up on Twitter, I can get into thoughts on the recruiting market, but for sure we consider things that do recruiting to be part of it. I mean, something like Textio is job, who started out its first application was AI for job descriptions. That's, that's amazing. Um, I, I love, by the way, like your honesty and transparency about being upfront about like what you do and don't invest in. That's just so, that's so refreshing just to, just to say, Hey, if you're doing this, just don't, don't waste either of our time and not in a way that's rude or disrespectful in a way that's totally, totally. I mean, look, found our time life. really is precious. You don't have time. And we try to do things quickly. I mean, I do this daily quick hit five minute thing on Twitter and LinkedIn called, this is not advice, which founders tell me they're like, I watch it over coffee in the morning and I get the value because you don't need a whole book. If the only thing I needed was the cliff notes. Totally. Uh, one, one more quick question for you. So Brooke asked, mentioned that you, or you had mentioned that you have a lot of sort of, I guess, unorthodox firms that you've invested in the GitHub list. What do you think are like, are the most, oh, here, on, here we go. Oh yeah. Do you have any, do you have any firms or startups that you wish you had invested in that were unorthodox that you didn't? I mean, orthodox and unorthodox, lots of them. I mean, it's very, like, I just talk about all the services we use every day, you know, the Airtable, Notion, yeah. you know, we wish we were investors in those because we use them and love them. And so there are many, you know, the thing is, I often find a lot of VCs do the anti-portfolio thing, oh, yeah. saying who they wish they'd invest in. It's usually just a flex to say like, I could have invested in X because I'm much less focused on the errors that we've made. Cause like, you know, we're going to make mistakes. Like we're not magical we again. We don't know. We're going to make the wrong call. We say it when we try to say it when we pass to founders. We know what we like, but we don't have, you know, crystal ball. We know how to support extraordinary founders. The thing is that um, what I worry a lot more about is who is the extraordinary founder who we never hear about because the world is big and complicated. So I'm much more focused on that than shite. I missed that one. That makes great. That makes a lot of sense. Um, man, you absolutely killed the presentation. What, one more time, what's the best way for prospective companies that fit within the paradigm that you invest in to reach out to you? Simplest yeah, I'll just say, it, it's a great question. It's in our manual. Um, and I'll just say, we treat working with us the same way as you would work with any other partner. You know, would you cold email if you didn't need to? No, you wouldn't. If you have to, you have to. My DMs on Twitter are open, but like I only connect on LinkedIn with people I'm going to ask for a reference. You can follow. And we VCs can smell when you've just cut and pasted a little bit. So yeah. you think you're being clever, but you're not. Jason said it perfectly in the intro. It is a numbers game, but it's also a personal relationships game. And as a founder, you don't get to choose. You have to do both. Makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, so Roy, hit me up. You can reach me wherever. I can tell you about lots of other stuff that we've done. And I'm just grateful that you guys went and did this because that's the real work. So thank you. Hey, absolutely. I mean, look, it was, it was a combination. It was a group effort. You had to have the idea first and then you had to have to, have to act on it. Um, but yeah, hey, I mean, I think that was already in motion, but like, it just gave us a chance to like, and look, like a pitch deck, I'll just say what you learn in doing it is what really matters to you. And like, okay, our center is the founder is our customer putting them first. That's what really matters to us. And you gave us an excuse for doing it. So yeah, I'm around. Thank you so much, Roy. Follow Roy on Twitter. Roy, we'll talk to you later. Take care, man. Okay, have a good cool. one today. Thank you. If you want to support events like this and, and keep them going in the future, thanking the sponsors on Twitter, what an amazing thing to do. You can at Jason, me at Inside and thank our amazing partners who made this possible. Really want you to um, give some love and attention, maybe retweet or thank the sponsors. You paid zero dollars to come today. You know why? All this work and effort because of sponsors like Just Call, ClearCo, Electric, and Burn Rate. Really, really, really appreciate the sponsors who helped me pay for my team to do all this work. 
Hey there, everyone. Uh, super excited to be here. My name is Gaurav Sharma. I'm the founder and CEO of Just Call. Uh, the reason for excitement is uh, not one, but two. Uh, one is that uh, I'm, I'm in front of all these amazing entrepreneurs from around the world watching this right now. And secondly, I'll be talking about one of my favorite topics uh, is uh, scaling your sales and customer support using technology. Uh, this time specifically, we'll be talking about uh, automating your voice and SMS workflows. So any phone calls, any SMS that you're doing to your prospective leads or your customers, uh, we'll try and squeeze out some of the time, some of the efforts that go into all the manual work that's happening currently uh, by the use of uh, our product called Just Call, which is a cloud phone system, a business phone system that, uh, that uh, businesses can use to automate a lot of stuff around voice and SMS. So firstly, uh, a quick background. So I've been running businesses, building businesses for almost 10 plus years now. I sold my first uh, business back in 2012. Then I sold the next one, 2016. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, angel investment as well, mostly SaaS, but then also I started uh, playing with health tech and uh, ad tech as well. About Just Call, uh, was started uh, end of 2016, early 2017, bootstrapped, drew almost $8 million in ARR, uh, very profitable. Uh, but then ended up uh, raising our first sectional funding just a couple of months back. We even announced that. Uh, you'll be reading that in TechCrunch uh, pretty soon. So super excited about that uh, part of the journey uh, on our on our side as well. Uh, so let's dive in. Actually, uh, let's see what uh, let's see what what a business phone system is basically. So business phone system is nothing but it's a combination of a lot of phone phone lines phones uh, that work that can work together among each other so that you can do a lot of things like call forwarding, call routing, uh, IVRs. So you can do a lot of things around your business phone system and it can be used for both external phone calling and can be used for internal phone calling as well among the team members as well. So business phone system, uh, especially talking about modern business phone system, it should work within your browser or your mobile apps, mobile, mobile phones. Uh, and should not rely on uh, the old school hardware and the wires that we used to have uh, while setting up call contact and call centers uh, back in those days. Uh, so 2016, when we were looking at uh, getting a business phone system for ourselves, for some of other uh, SaaS products that I was sort of growing that time, we, we figured out that there are certain problems uh, with, with the existing uh, solution in the market. Uh, they all were non-collaborative, uh, Every agent was working in, in a silo itself, so there was no knowledge sharing, no information sharing among the, what all activities different agents are doing. Uh, so that was a big pain for us, and that was a must. That was no-no for us. Then there were limited integrations and APIs. Uh, the biggest value prop that a, a modern business phone system can bring in is the integration with other business tools. And thirdly, there were nothing. There was nothing much around analytics or there was a very limited analytics that our managers couldn't make much of. Uh, so that's why we were in the market uh, for, for a business phone system. Now let's learn what, who all sort of need a business phone system. Not every business requires a business phone system, really. Uh, so from our understanding, after serving almost 6,000 plus businesses around the world in uh, almost 40 plus countries in last five-ish years, uh, we, have, we have seen that uh, any company which has like uh, five plus five or more uh, team members who are using phone to either make business calls or sales calls or answer uh, customer calls or reply to SMSs. Uh, that's a pretty good starting point actually for a business phone system to start making some sense, to start giving you some ROI on your investment. Uh, also, we have seen that once you set up a CRM for a business, uh, business it, it's a good time to start looking for a business phone system as well. And especially if all your team members are working remotely, then there is no then there is no time to to sort of wait to get a business phone system for your uh, business basically uh, also with the current business with the current uh, old school business phone system in the market uh, things get more complex and expensive as we go up 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 the up the size of the company uh, and it's not at all possible for remote teams to have those old school uh, uh, business phone systems where you, you need a you need a lot of hardware a lot of wires to plug into each other and and, and do their stuff uh, also business phone systems which don't provide any sort of automation around the manual work uh, we have seen that uh, such companies hit get a almost 20% hit on their sales productivity uh, just a simple um, sort of survey that we did with our, with our customers we figured out that 
on an average every sales person is losing almost 2 minutes 2 minutes every phone call uh by doing the manual work that's required after a phone call or pre phone call so that's hundreds of hours in a annual basis for every single agent, agent uh, that that's making calls for you or taking calls for you so yeah so that's why you need a modern phone system to save time to automate a lot of uh, manual work to save a lot of efforts of your uh, sales rep and support reps and make sure that it is unlimitedly if that's a word it's 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 scalable it's scalable even if you are like a 10 seats or like 10000 seats it's scalable and there's no problem with the flexibility of the system so that's where so when you are in the market make sure that it's it checks all these points that it has automation it is flexible uh and it gives some of the features that we will be talking about uh, later on and exactly that's why once we understood the problem we thought that it's 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 something that the modern businesses require so that's why we built uh, just call uh, for our customers so basically how we fix the problem so just call is a express setup you don't need any hardware you don't need any know how you know don't need any technology know how any your sales person or your support person can set up just call within 5 minutes or less uh, you have one click integrations with 80 plus other business systems in the market be it crm be it uh, help chat like intercom or be it uh, fresh desk so you can have like a uh, one click integration with 80 plus other crms in the market so a lot of collaboration a lot of data uh logging and automation can come into play now uh with just calls uh, one click integrations obviously because analytics was a pain for us so we made sure that just call provides a real time performance to the managers to the agents who are making calls to so that you have a clear picture on what's happening and what's not working or what's working uh and most importantly we made sure that it's flexible enough that even a small team of 5 or a team of 10000 agents can work on the same software just call uh, without facing any problem in scaling up the 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 you know the the system basically uh talking about uh trust and security that's obviously at most for us i don't want to get in much into that but we are hipaa compliant so if you are running a healthcare uh, uh business make sure that you are looking for you are going only for a hipaa compliant phone system uh because that's that's very important from the compliance uh, point of view uh as i mentioned before just call integ- is the one of the biggest value props or differentiators for us is basically our native integration with almost 80 plus other business tools in the market even if you compare our integrations with other players in the market ours are way way better because we have done all these native work on all these integrations so we work directly with these players so be it pipe drive be it salesforce be it uh, influence soft gong we are very good friends with them and we made sure that we 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 give you all the possible automation possibilities uh so that we can save all your agents more and more time give make them more and more productive with time uh as a bootstrap company in the early days uh customer support providing customer support was the only differentiator that we had so we managed to get some great love from our sort of customers our customers love us uh because the kind of integrations that we provide the kind of ease of use uh just call provide is no nothing nothing fancy it's it's pretty easy to use uh you get a 24 hour support and it integrates with 80 plus other business tools so if you're using any of the popular uh, crm or the help desk in the market i'm pretty sure that we'll be integrating with that uh as we grew we started attracting some some of the big names in the market this is not the complete list we have 6000 plus businesses that we work with uh and the the really good part here is that all these customers found us organically they started with three or four or five seats uh figured out how it works and then they started rolling out in among uh, different teams as well so so it's a, so there are a lot of teams there who started with five agents or two agents and then almost scaled to 500 agents without any problem as i mentioned before a business phone system should be scalable should be flexible uh so we ensure that just on just call uh, we are able to support uh, all these customers basically uh with their scaling with the flexibility with their integrations so that we can automate things around sms and voice so all in all just call is basically integrated voice plot platform you can you can use it from any time you can use it any time from anywhere and any device right so you, you don't have to stick to your office desk to have that access to your business phone number now you have access to your business phone number in 70 plus phone con- con- plus countries 
uh, you can use it on your mobile phone you can use it on your desktop you can use it uh, on your browser uh, and it, it's it's a completely integrated voice platform um, right so so that's a kind of uh, look of just call it's it we keep on improving it on daily basis but that's the kind of latest one i got for you guys uh so yeah, as as i mentioned you can either use it on your desktop or you can use mobile apps uh, for for all your sales and support calls uh so now let's jump into more specific sort of uh, benefits of or how we can automate some of the stuff and how we can save your reps some time so for sales uh the 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 hottest feature that we have is the auto dialer and the predictive dialer so you basically don't have to dial the numbers anymore uh, you can just upload a list of all the contacts that you want to reach out to and the system will automatically dial connect the phone connect it with you so you, it will save you tens of seconds every call just from the dialing part of it or from the connection part of it uh, also uh, you can you can drop a voicemail with a click of a button so if your calls are going to a voicemail you don't have to speak out all the time so if you're doing 100 calls a day 30 are going to voicemail box you don't have to speak out the voicemail uh, message all the time you can just click a button drop the voicemail you're done uh, you can set up some amazing follow up uh, text and sms uh, uh, workflows so let's say uh, if your call is scheduled with someone you can set up a, a workflow where you can send a, an sms to that person that hey i'll be talking to you in the next 30 minutes looking forward to our call or hey i'll be talking to you in 30 minutes here's the pdf of the thing we'll be discussing about so you can do a lot of automation around SMS for follow-ups, for pre-call, anything like that. The biggest time saver productivity booster is the auto sync with the CRM. So just call not only syncs with your uh, contacts in your CRM, but it also sort of starts logging your uh, phone calls, call recordings, voicemails, missed calls, everything in your CRM itself. So your salesperson don't have to do anything now. You just have to do the phone calls, all the other manual work. All the heavy lifting around the manual work will be taken care by just call. So after every phone call you end, you 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 put some notes there. You you take some notes there. Everything gets logged automatically in your sales CRM, uh, along with the call recording, along, along with the call duration, along with the call outcome that you selected. So no more manual work. Continue doing more calls. Continue doing more sales. Basically, if you're if you are in a if you're in US and you're selling to a UK customers. Just call get, can get you a UK number as well. So more sort of local presence will help you close more deals, especially international deals, right? Uh, another important thing is the coaching part. Like it's very important to coach our folks uh, well. So Just Call provides you an opportunity, you know, an option to monitor your calls, your ongoing calls. So you can listen to any call, any ongoing call between your agent and the prospective customer. You can barge into that call if something is going not going right, or you can whisper something to the agent like, "Hey, push him, push him for the pricing, push him for whatever." You know, so you can you can do the 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 whispering part as well, where you can just you can send some messages to your agent who is currently on call with the uh, the prospective customer. And then let's come to the post call workflows. So after every phone call, you can again spin out a lot of workflows like you can you can trigger a post call survey you can trigger uh, an sms saying thank you or you can trigger depending on the disposition code uh, you can trigger so many things after the post call so that can also be automated and your sales people can again continue doing the phone calls they don't have to do any manual work again after the post call uh, scenario so <clears throat> so a lot of time saving a lot of automation a lot of uh, manual work taken off the table from the sales people so your sales people will be more happier they'll be putting in more efforts into sales so all the time saved through all that manual work uh, taken care of they'll be able to do more sales calls and definitely more sales so that's where the the roi starts kicking in uh, once you start saving your sales people efforts and time in doing all the boring stuff uh, similarly for customer support as i mentioned it's a business phone system you can set up a lot of call routing uh, you can set up an ivr system like press one for sales press two for support or press one for uh, english press two for spanish you know so you can automate a lot of such stuff you can look more cool uh, to your customers you can make sure the customer always reaches to the right person in the team so that you save a lot of point of contacts while forwarding a call of a customer to a right person in your team uh, and again having said that it's all can be done with done by your own sales and support team you don't need any technical support 
you don't need any engineers to do that because in early days when we used to have those hardwares and plugged in with wires and everything we used to call engineers to come and reconfigure our ivr so that's not going to happen here everyone each one of you who is using just call can just do some clicks and that's done so that's that's how easy it is to set up an ivr as in sales we also help you auto sync everything in your help desk be it notes be it phone calls recordings missed call voice voice uh, mails everything at logged in your help desk so that makes again uh, life of your support person easier so that this person can take more calls uh, support customers quickly uh, and whenever you get a phone call from a customer uh, all the details of the customer is popped up in front of you so you can see okay if this customer is calling from this num this uh, this place uh, a link to the CRM profile is also provided so that you can open and see the whole case history for the customer. You can get more information about the customer. Okay, this is a premium customer, this is a VIP customer. So you can do a lot of stuff around uh, just the pre-call part of it. The post-call part of it, there are another bunch of automation that you can set up. Uh, right, so that's how there's so many things in the support thing that you can automate that end of the day, you'll be needing less support people uh, to support or you know, uh, service more customers. So that's going to be an immediate ROI uh, generator for you uh, if you if you switch to a, a good uh, business phone system. So this is something, these are some of the minimum uh, features that you should be looking for in any business phone system that you're looking for a support or for sales. Uh, if not uh, going with just call, then this is something that you should be looking at in some of the other things that you are considering to set up in your uh, in your company basically. Uh, just call for manager. I've already covered a lot of points here, but the most important thing is the the real-time coaching uh, Because you have access to all the recordings you can uh, you can listen to calls it, uh, in the real time. So there's a lot of uh, Ease of doing uh, coaching uh, comes in from here. Then you obviously have performance analytics You can see which agent is doing what how's the performance on monthly weekly basis You can set up some metrics to track. So that's all can be done uh, through 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 just call dashboard and or this is something you should look for in any business phone system that you're looking for so yeah so this is pretty much uh, from from my end a lot to digest here but uh, uh, to make it easier for you to switch to just call or to start using a business phone system we're happy to offer something splash special exclusive for you all uh, it's a 20 percent discount on all the monthly subscription plans that we have uh, for next 12 months so <clears throat> so it will make it easier for your switch to a business phone system also feel free to set up a, a free demo for the product to understand how it fits in your sort of business how it helps your sales and support teams how it works with your crm or help desk you can just ping s at just call .io and you can set up a free demo uh, today itself <clears throat> for anything around SaaS, anything around business building anything around just call i'm always available gaurav at just call .io. Or you can follow me on Twitter. I normally tweet about uh, my playbooks for building SaaS business or anything around business, business uh, SaaS specifically. Uh, so looking forward to connect with some of you folks. Uh, wish you all the best and uh, thank you inside uh, for this opportunity. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, have a good one. Uh, take care.